If you want to make money as a developer, there are a lot of different skills that you will have to learn. You can't just go out there and learn any random skills about like five different programming languages and expect that to work. What you need to do is create your skill stack. So what does this mean? The best programmers are very strategic about what they learn and in what order because certain skills complement other skills really well. This is what I mean about the concept of a skill stack. It's like building a house of cards. First, you lay the foundation, you build the foundational layer of your skill stack. And then the next set of skills that you learn are going to be something that are going to go on top of this foundational layer that you learned before. And then you essentially keep stacking your skills on top of each other to really build a solid skill set as a developer that can make you more than $10,000 a month. But most people don't know what the right skill stack is to actually get them to this income level. So in this video, I want to give you my framework to build your developer skill stack on exactly where you should start and what skills you should learn and in exactly what order to become the best developer possible worthy of earning more than $10,000 a month. Everything starts with your foundation. Now, this is essentially where you're just learning about what programming is. Like if you never coded before, you don't even know what programming is. You don't know the basics of how programming in general works, this is where you need to start because this is going to lay the foundation to whatever skill stack you want to learn as a developer. Basically, this is about learning the skill of the logic of programmatic thinking. There's a certain flow and a certain way that programs work. For example, you're just learning basic things like programs work from top to bottom and every line of code is executed in order. You're learning about the five core building blocks of programming, specifically what the variables are, what control flow is, so if else statements, you're learning about how to create functions, you're learning about loops, it's very, very foundational basic programming concepts that really lay the foundation to whatever else you're going to learn after that. By the end of this, you're going to be able to write very basic programs. You're also going to learn how to use libraries, which is sort of the first layer that you're going to start putting on top of these basics, because at the end of the day, as a programmer, what you will learn very quickly is that it's very inefficient to try to code most things from scratch. What you really doing most of the time is building on top of the work of other developers who have created libraries and tools and frameworks, which we'll talk about in a second, and then using those strategically to build something substantial. So once you've learned these basic core foundations of programming, as well as how to use libraries and some of the basic logic of programming, you have now acquired the foundation of programming. The next skill after that is going to be some kind of framework. We can talk about this in the context of mobile development or web development or cybersecurity or whatever niche of programming you're going into, but we'll just focus on web development because that is the most common one and it's the one that I am most familiar with. What a framework is essentially is, is like a set of tools that have been created for you to build software more easily and quickly. Imagine that you're building a house. A framework for building a house is like someone giving you ready-made tools, ready-made pre-cut pieces of wood, nails, and a full blueprint on exactly how to build a house. So then all you have to do is put these pieces together in the right way, rather than, for example, build a door from scratch or something like that. What this provides you as the builder of this house is just the freedom to only focus on the real value adding parts of the process, which is actually assembling the house and making the decisions about what kind of house you're going to build. In the case of a programming framework, like a front-end framework, like React, for example, the do-it-yourself way would be to go and use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from scratch to build everything from the ground up, which can be a great exercise, and you should do this at least once as a beginner just to understand how this works. But beyond that, it's quite tedious to try to do this manually, which is why programmers have created these frameworks that provide all these ready-made tools that you can simply plug and play and develop on top of much faster. So for example, you don't have to go and build the basic infrastructure of a web server from scratch, which after the first time is going to get very, very boring and really amplify this at some point, you're going to want to start adding data into your applications, which brings us to the third layer of our skill stack, the database. And there is only so much useful stuff you can do with your websites if you have no way to store any kind of data inside of your application. So the way this will work is that part of your backend framework, there will usually be some kind of way to connect that backend framework to a database and communicate to it using a database language like most commonly SQL. And exactly how this works will depend on your chosen backend framework, but it can get 
quite tedious to write raw SQL, even if you don't have the right raw SQL, like in the case of Django models or something like that. At some point, as your databases grow, you're going to want to have some kind of tool to make managing these databases easier as well, such as, for example, DB Forge Studio by DevArt, who are today's video sponsor. DB Forge Studio for MySQL is a feature rich IDE that helps streamline database design and development and is perfectly suitable for beginners and also seasoned professionals. With this studio, you essentially get one integrated toolkit that makes it possible to speed up, simplify and automate a lot of the routine work with using a MySQL or a MariaDB database. Just some of the features that you get access to are, for example, code auto completion, relevant object suggestions, flexible code formatting, smart debugging and instant syntax validation. And there's also a set of visual tools that make it easy to, to design databases on these intuitive diagrams with no even need to code anything. And at some point, you'll also start to need multiple databases in one application. And for that, DevArt also offers DB Forge Edge, which is a suite that comprises four database IDEs with similarly clean and intuitive user interfaces. So I highly recommend that you check out these tools as they make managing databases so much easier and simpler. Both links will be down below. Simply download the 30 day free trial to explore their full capabilities. And additionally, a free express edition is available at no cost. So thank you for DevArt for sponsoring this video. And now let's move on to the next part of our skill stack, which is going to be development practices and tools. So to recap what we learned so far, you have an understanding of programming. You have learned the concept of frameworks, as well as a couple of specific frameworks that now allow you to build full applications from scratch alongside connecting the application to a database either directly via your frameworks or to make these even easier with tools like DP Forge. But to truly become an effective developer professionally working in a real team, you also need to understand software development practices and tools that are commonly used by software developers so they can function in a team environment and build really big applications together with other developers. For example, when you enter a real professional environment, you're probably going to be using something called agile working, where the entire project is going to be divided into teams and the teams have divided the work into what are called sprints. So let's say a two week sprint will mean that during that sprint, there are a certain amount of tickets, again, in other terms that you want to learn. So like specific work items that are going to want to be completed and this is going to be managed in some kind of Kanban board or like an agile working management system. So all these concepts and things like this are something that you're going to need to learn once you get ready to enter the professional environment. And in terms of development as well, there's a couple of basic tools that you simply need to be aware of. The big ones are going to be Git and GitHub. So when you're developing software that is complicated, especially in a team, you're going to be using something called version control. So essentially this is like saving checkpoints within the development. So if something goes wrong and some dumb intern inserts some code that completely breaks the project, that doesn't destroy the entire progress of the team because you can just go back to the checkpoint. That is the idea of what Git is doing. So you're going to be learning the basic commands of Git, how to use it. That can be quite overwhelming for beginners, but once you just get a hang of some of the basics, it's really not that bad at all. And you're going to want to learn the basics of GitHub or another sort of remote repository management tool. And this is essentially just a fancy word for the place where the code of your project is going to be stored so that many developers can access it at the same time. You'll also want to learn about testing. So when your software becomes complicated, you want to start writing tests to really make sure everything is working properly. I've never been that good at testing. I kind of hate writing tests. When I build something for myself, I never do it, but don't do what I do, do what I say. Now, once you learn all of these skills, you now have the skills to build fully fledged software on your own, as well as function well in a team. And you can get into the industry with these skills, but to really excel in the industry, whether that's in a company or as a freelancer or as an independent software engineer like me, you're going to also need to learn the last piece of the puzzle and the highest level of your skill stack, which is going to be user experience design. The thing is, most developers are sort of like nerdy, like they have very good technical skills. They understand how to write code. They are really into the technical details of their projects. But for these kinds of developers, unless someone is specifically telling you what to build, you're not going to have the ability to actually decide what to build in the right way. Let me give you an example. Imagine building the most technically sophisticated project in the world. Let's say you're building some kind of productivity software, but then it turns out that the productivity software is simply not something that anyone wants to use. It doesn't solve any kind of problem to anyone and it's really 
difficult to use. If you give the software to someone and they tell you that the app sucks and then you tell them, but it's really technically complex, but we have this really cool backend and this database design and all this stuff. Do you think the user is going to care? No, they won't. The only thing the user cares about is this easy to use and does this solve a problem for me. Once you learn user experience design, this is really what you're learning. Like you're even forgetting about the technical details. You're just learning to look at your, the software that you build from the perspective of the user. What is actually making this software something that a real world user is going to want to use. So really this last skill is mostly a mindset. It's to remember what coding really is, is simply a tool to solve problems. And at the end of the day, no one, literally no one, cares about your code. The only thing that people outside of the coding world care about is does your software solve a problem for them? Is it easy to use? Is it useful for them? So if you really wanna get to the top level, whether that's building your own software or really becoming a lead software engineer or a tech lead or something like that, where you're gonna be getting to the point where you're making these decisions about what to build, how to build it, how to architect your software, how to design your app. And I'm not talking about visual design, I'm talking about how to actually design it from a functional perspective. This is something that you're really going to have to learn and this is the skill that's really going to make you stand out above other developers who simply remain really good technically but who don't understand user experience design. So you might be asking yourself what is the best way to learn these skills and the answer to that question is you simply need to build projects but for many people this is going to lead you to another problem which is how do you build projects from scratch if you've never done that before. Well for that purpose I actually made this video right here where I go through my full project building process which is the exact exact process that I go through to build any coding project from scratch, even if it's something that I've never built before. I think it's one of the most helpful videos that you will ever watch about coding. So I highly urge you to go and watch this video next. Let me know what you think. and I'll see you in the next one.